Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to install an E3D Volcano Nozzle in a Saval SVO6+. The advantages of the E3D Volcano Nozzle over the Saval proprietary nozzle are that the E3D nozzle is more prolific. It has more available options for a wider range of costs, and many longtime 3D printing hobbyists may already own a collection of these nozzles. The E3D Volcano Nozzle is about 2.5 millimeters shorter than the Saval nozzle. I have the E3D Volcano Nozzle highlighted right now, and then you can see the Saval nozzle extending further down past it. So because of this, we have to make several changes to the printer in order to accommodate the new Volcano nozzle. First, we will have to remove or modify the part cooling fan shroud, which is this guy, the gray one. Um, I am opting to remove the original 4010 part cooling fan completely and replace it with a 5015 fan and a new 3D printed shroud, which are these guys. And this shroud is created by a guy called Flynn Industries on printables. So then after we do that, we have to adjust the bed leveling sensor because it sits lower than the end of the volcano nozzle and it would hit the bed. Um, so we're going to adjust it upwards, which is fairly easy. And then when we're done with all of that, we are going to recalibrate our Z offset and reperform resonance tuning if you're using input shaper and then we should be ready to print. For parts for this project, you're going to need five M3 by 25 millimeter screws. At least two of those need to be countersunks or button heads with a head that is pretty much less than two millimeters tall. Um, you're gonna need three M3 nuts, a 5015 fan, and then you're going to need to print a fan shroud and mounting bracket, preferably in PETG. You could do it in PLA, but I really would not recommend this. So in order to remove the part cooling fan, you're gonna remove four screws on the bottom side of the extruder. Um, this is gonna allow you to take off the part cooling fan and the fan shroud. Once you have those off, there's gonna be two more screws underneath and that will allow you to remove the part cooling fan bracket. At this point, it's a good idea to test fit the new fan uh, part cooling fan shroud so that you can make sure that it's going to fit um, before you get your printer too far along and realize that something isn't going to work out and now you're stuck without a printer. I have multiple printers, so that's not a problem for me, but if it's your only printer, make sure that the new fan shroud is actually going to fit and use the screws that you're going to use because um, if you have the wrong size screws, you might find that it doesn't fit. So I'm going to show you how to install the new fan shroud. Uh, at this point, you should not adjust the wiring. We'll do that later on, just in case you run into an issue. That way you can still revert back to the original part cooling fan. In order to install the new fan shroud, you're going to need to remove two screws off the back of the X carriage. And I'll show you that. And then once you've removed those two screws, um, you're going to install the fan shroud using longer screws. You can't use the original ones. And these need to be 25 millimeter M3 screws with a button head or a countersunk head. At this point, go ahead and slide the X carriage all the way to both sides and make sure that your shroud does not interfere with either of the vertical extrusions. If it fits and it doesn't get caught on anything, then it's looking good and you can proceed with the next step. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and switch the Saval nozzle to the E3D Volcano nozzle. This is standard nozzle switching procedure, so just follow the normal procedure. Make sure to heat up the nozzle before you remove it and be careful not to burn yourself while you're doing this. And of course, heat up the nozzle whenever you're doing your final tightening. So in order to adjust the ABL sensor up, it's a pretty easy process. First things first, we have to remove this screw right here, and then we'll have to slide the wiring over to the side, and this carriage that the sensor sits in will slide down. So the bracket that I just highlighted will stay on the extruder, but I'm gonna blank it so that it's easier to see what I'm talking about next. Um, once you slide this carriage down, you can leave the wires plugged in, 
um, there's a set screw that's within this little threaded insert and it's really hard to see but it's in there and you're going to loosen that set screw and then you can adjust the sensor up and down within the carriage so you need to adjust it so that the, the distance that i will highlight here oops so that the distance between these two surfaces is 2.5 millimeters instead of 5 millimeters. And I'll show you how we do that in a moment. Okay, so first things first, we need to remove this screw. And then this wire should just slide over and the carriage will slide down. And then I've actually already adjusted this one before, but I'm going to undo it and then redo it so you guys can see. So we'll take a really small uh, Allen key and stick it in there, get the set screw, and we're going to loosen it. And once we loosen it, you'll see that the sensor can slide up and down. So we want about 2.5 millimeters, so I'm going to take this 2.5 millimeter Allen key and we're just going to set it on the allen key like so Here. and then we'll re-tighten the set screw i'm going to check it and if it looks about right which that does, then uh, then we can reinstall it. And reinstall is just the opposite of um, removal. Here, I'm going to make sure I tighten this all the way. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to put the wire up, and then, oops, I always get this wrong. You got to go under and then over with the wire. I'm going to slide this guy up, back up in this channel. And then we'll take our screw and come in from the top. Next, we're going to try homing the Z-axis and see if everything still works now that we've adjusted the sensor. Before you do this, make sure that there's nothing on the extruder head that sits lower than the nozzle. Uh, if that's true, go ahead and start the homing procedure. Um, while you're doing this, make sure you keep your finger on the power switch so that you can kill it if it keeps going and doesn't stop. There we go. That home successfully. Uh, nothing collided with the bed, so we're looking good. At this point, you can go ahead and cut the plug off of the old part cooling fan and solder it to the new part cooling fan. I tried to record this, but I had a little bit of a hardware malfunction, and so I didn't get that on video. But I'll just show you some pictures of what it would look like when you're done. Um, this isn't that complicated, but if it's your first time soldering something, maybe practice on some wires you don't care about so you don't mess up the ones going into your only plug. But yeah, after that, you can reinstall the fan shroud and plug it into the board. At this point, there's a couple things you should do before continuing to use your printer as normal. Uh, first, you should verify that the part cooling fan runs. If you soldered everything up correctly, it should work just fine. Then you should slide the X axis to both the minimum and maximum positions and make sure that there are no um, collisions between the new shroud and the um, vertical stanchions of the printer. Um, once you've done those two things, recalibrate your Z offset for the new nozzle. And then if you're using input shaper, go ahead and retune the X axis input shaper since you've modified the X carriage. And then once you're done with all of that, print a benchy and get back to printing. I hope you found this video enjoyable. Um, this is kind of a new thing for me. So if you have any suggestions about how I could improve these videos, Feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks.